Hey guys, it's Quilty. Today, I'm going to make an umbrella wine barrel. So, a simple um, outdoor setting type of setup. But what I'm going to do is also show you the do's and don'ts, the how to's, the how not to, with working with a barrel. Um, my time working with them, I found plenty of little tips and tricks and things not to touch. <laughs> so yeah, I'll show you the way to remove the bands uh, safely without your barrel falling apart. So you can do this at home whenever you want to do it. Um, today I've got Mr. Alpha, he's going to um, be watching over what I'm doing, keeping a keen eye on um, the, um, <laughs> the quality of work whilst he's chewing on a bit of a wine barrel. So yeah, today, depending on how clean and how well these um, bands are looked after, will depend on how, whether I paint them or if they clean up really nice and keep them silver. So this video, a wine barrel, turned into an umbrella stand. I hope you enjoy. Thank you very much. <laughs> As you can see, one of the bands has come off, and this has been slapped with some sort of, uh, I'd say, oil, uh, once again, or a cheap, cheap uh, varnish. Whoever had these um, barrels before me has coated nearly every one of the screws in like a um, liquid nails, so when I'm trying to get them out of their holes, there's no, there's no, um, the tops are just, there's no tops, so the tops have been um, filled with like blue tack or <laughs> Liquid nails of some sort. Just make it really hard to get. Alright, guys. The world isn't tilted, the camera's not off. It, um, this is on a um, bunch of wheels to make it easier for me to move around. Plus, I put this underneath. Just kind of stop it from like free rolling around the shed. Okay. Um, now, with the barrels, that you get, I mean, the bands that you're going to knock off. If you didn't hear before, do not knock these ones off. You do not want to knock your tops and your bottom bend. This one here, and when it's upside down, the same one. So these are the ones you want to make sure that do not come off. Um, Alright, the barrel. I have stripped it apart, taken the bands off, left the top on, left the bottom on. I've also re-pinned the top band and the bottom band, just because I don't want it to fall apart. It falls apart, barrel's cooked, put it in the bin, use it for smoking, get rid of it. Unless each one of these are numbered and you want to put it back together, good luck. I haven't been able to put one back together yet. Saying that, this one here you can see the difference between the colours of the um, the stain and the original oak. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and clean this up and get them back down to that original oak. It shouldn't be too hard. 
the uh, we've got the support of Alpha, so yeah, wish me luck. We're going straight to the 40 grip. Alright guys, as you can see, I have ripped all, to, I would say 80% of all the varnish and stain off the previous on this barrel. If you're wondering why I switch in between the sander and then the angle grinder, um, think of it as in the two, the, the edges here, the staves, the bits you can see where there's still a bit of paint or varnish, um, when they're not level and they're like, that one popped out a little bit further than the other, to run the sander over and over and knock half an inch of uh, oak down so I can get to that little bit of paint, it's just easier to put the, um, the sanding disc on the angle grinder and just rip that edge right down, which I've done here, uh, which gets me flush again with the, um, the bit of paint or varnish and um, I can clean it up a lot easier. But what I'll do along the top edge here is I'll run the, um, the sander, the, the rotary sander along the top because I think with the um, angle grinder and the, uh, the um, sanding disc, what can happen is when they, they start to touch goes from wood to steel, wood to steel, there's a good chance that uh, the, um, the sanding disc will explode and just like rip into pieces, of, uh, which I, I'm sure I've got on video, which I'll <laughs> definitely add into the video in slow motion so you can see how fast they come out. Uh, and if you want to know my face is red, because I'm wearing that bloody mask and it's really hot down in the shed at the moment, so safety first, eh?
Hey guys, Quilty. Day one done. As you can see, I've um, smashed the uh, barrel back down to that original oaks, which I think is going to come out bonza. It's going to come out more. Once I put an oil on that, great. Hey, right, still got to punch a hole in the um, top for the umbrella. Still got to clean up the bands, depending on whether how well they clean up, how smashed and bent they are, or how scratched they are. It will depend on whether I spray paint them black, kind of hides it a bit better. But as you can see, I have not taken the top bands off, so do not and I cannot stress enough, do not take the top bands off unless there is another band on. You're going to take these off, put one back on. But the easiest way to clean them, you know, 90% of the barrel, as you can see here, is to leave the two, um, the top and bottom band on, pin it in place so it can't go anywhere, and then uh, hit it with a bit of sandpaper. You don't have to take the bands off to clean up. It just makes for that unison kind of look and finish. Stay tuned, guys. I'm going to... Um... Hey, guys. Quilty here, it's uh, day two. Today I'm going to sink the umbrella, so the umbrella hole will go on the top. A bit of sanding still to do on the top and a few other little spots that I may have missed uh, from yesterday. Also, we're gonna look at uh, tidying up the bands and then um, I will probably add a nice varnish or a, a gloss polyurethane to make this all waterproof because it's gonna be outside a lot. Um, Arthur's still over in the back there somewhere on his mat enjoying the um, nice warm day. So. We'll see where this um, if we can get this done today, but um, this might be another. This might be a couple of hours into another day, uh, three day job. Alright guys, um, you're probably going to see me do something really strange here, which is use the uh, rotary sander on the steel bands. And I know they're designed for wood, but I've tried these before. I've tried these before. I've tried the fibrous little discs, the little flapper discs, to tidy up the bands before. And for some reason, a light, uh, say a 180 grit sandpaper on the bands does it in a couple of minutes. It's it's nuts. You'll see the um, you'll see how I do it right now. It's, it's crazy. As you can see, it is smooth, it's ready to be straight up polished, and there's the top band. It took me a while. 
a minute and a bit to do one band. So I've got to do six of them, so it's about, what, ten minutes to knock out every band. Uh, when you're time poor, it just works. As I said, I've tried all the other stuff. It just um, it just doesn't do the job that you kind of want it to do. All I want to do is make these look a little bit more shinier, and then, um, as I said, I'm going to I'm gonna polish over the top of them anyway. Um, but yeah, I think I'll keep them silver, because I think it's going to be a really light looking, nice looking barrel. So. Alright guys, uh, I'm running out of daylight so I want to get this polyurethane on ASAP and cover the top, cover the sides. You've seen that I've just cleaned it with the gurney, left it outside, let it dry. Uh, that got all the dust, dirt, debris that may have come off the sander so it makes it a bit easier when I go um, to apply the polyurethane. It doesn't um, go to shit and get all bits and bobs in it. Uh, once it's poly, uh, it's covered in its polyurethane, that'll make it pretty much weatherproof so you'll be able to go outside. It's kind of pretty much wrapped in a big old um, plastic or the same type of stuff that goes on your floorboards. Uh, then we'll pop the umbrella in it and that's it. So let's get at it. Alright guys, that's a barrel done.
this barrel needs to dry and then I can put the umbrella in it. At the moment, it's covered in um, polyurethane. As I said, I want it as a nice thick layer so it acts like a protective cover for the entire barrel. Uh, I went with gloss, it's because what I had, so I may as well use it up. But you can see here, I didn't go, it wasn't fancy, it wasn't like um, the table with the finishing, the, the surface. This, it was just slap it on, get a nice thick coat. Doesn't matter if it gets a bit of a run, I'll keep brushing around it as it goes, and once it all reaches the bottom, I'll clean it all up. But um, most of it should move to the bottom, then it'll be nice and clean. Um, I'm pretty happy with where it's at at the moment. As I said, in theory, tomorrow I'll be able to put the umbrella in it and then do a few more photos with it like that. All right, guys, thank you very much. Good morning, guys. Welcome to my backyard. Um, the umbrella stand is all done. So the umbrella barrel is all um, finished up. So we'll cure it overnight and it's all ready to go. Um, as you can see, the umbrella is being held dead centre. Um, it should it should also withstand a, a, a pretty strong breeze. Um, so yeah, hopefully, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. Um, if you have, please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll just um, I'll keep making things that you enjoy. Um, it was pretty hot this morning. You can hear the um, the carters chirping. So you can see why I'm a bit sweaty trying to put the umbrella, getting it down the stairs, and getting it outside is um, good fun. But yeah, guys, if you've enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe. We'll be out.